Good morning friends this is Dr Vineet Sehgal and welcome to this ophthalmology nugget session for the NEET PG 2021 So today we would discuss a very important topic that is retinoblastoma So as you all know the retinoblastoma is most common intraocular malignancy in children if they ask most common primary intraocular malignancy in adults then remember it is uveal melanoma the average age of diagnosis of retinoblastoma is 18 months okay remember if there is a unilateral retinoblastoma the average age of diagnosis is 24 months but if it is a bilateral retinoblastoma then the average age of diagnosis is 12 months so what does it mean how can they ask you a question they can ask you a question that the bilateral retinoblastoma present earlier as compared to the unilateral retinoblastoma an important point to note now the next important thing is about the genetics of retinoblastoma so many times asked so retinoblastoma can be both sporadic or familial okay the rb gene is a tumor suppressor gene which is predominantly dominant in inheritance pattern as you know it is basically seen as a mutation of the 13q14 gene which is a group t chromosome okay so in the chromosome 13 which is a group d chromosome maximum number of mutations are seen which are responsible for the retinoblastoma if i take about the epidemiology of retinoblastoma it is 6% familial and 94% sporadic okay and in this 94% sporadic 30% patients are having germline mutations and around 60 to 70% of patients are having the somatic mutation so remember if there is a bilateral retinoblastoma so this means that the 100% of the patients who have got a bilateral retinoblastoma they are having a germline mutation if the patient is having a unilateral retinoblastoma this also does not mean that the patient cannot have germline mutation okay so what is the practical aspect the practical aspect is even if the patient is having a unilateral retinoblastoma still he can pass it on this gene to his children okay so the unilateral retinoblastoma also 15% patients are having germline mutations and 85% patients are having somatic mutations now on histopathology there can be various type of features that can be seen which would be would be talked by the pathology faculty just remember the name of the various pathological patterns that are the homer right patterns which are having tumor cells around the neural cells the flexner wintersteiner cells which are having a central clear lumen the pseudo rosettes which are having the cells around the blood vessels and the florets so these are the four patterns which we see in a retinoblastoma now what is the nuts and two hit hypothesis in retinoblastoma so basically there are i told you two types of retinoblastoma hereditary and sporadic in hereditary retinoblastoma the initial hit is in the germinal mutation okay which is inherited and the second hit is there in the somatic retinal cells okay but in the sporadic type of retinoblastoma both the mutations occur during the development of retina okay so what it means is whenever there is a hereditary retinoblastoma some part has come as a genetic predisposition from his parents okay so one part is a inherited mutation and other part is a somatic mutation okay but in a spor sporadic type of retinoblastoma both of them are acquired after the birth okay okay now what is the pathogenesis of retinoblastoma that the accumulation of proliferating embryonic retinal cells occur in the eyeball okay so these new cells which are pathological cells they start collecting inside the eye in the retina which basically can come inside the vitreous which we call endophytic retinoblastoma or they can go outside which is called exophytic retinoblastoma and they can be a diffuse infiltrating where they are seen as a plaque okay so what they can do is they can do a total destruction of retina they can basically cause the seeding in the vitreous or they can cause subretinal hemorrhage these retinoblastoma cells can go into the anterior part where they can cause an angle closure glaucoma as well where if they push the lens forward then they can cause 
uh, closing of the angles the rbc's or the tumor cells can also cause occluding uh, of the occlusion of the angles or they can basically be cause of the neovascularization of iris which after the synechial closure can cause an angle closure trachoma now the tumor cells these cells can go from the optic nerve chiasma to the brain remember the if they ask the most common route of the metastasis of retinoblastoma the most common route of metastasis to the retinoblastoma is your optic nerve okay but remember they can also penetrate through the blood vessels or from the nerves or up to the sclera and cause a extraocular or orbital retinoblastoma also now if they ask about the clinical manifestation of retinoblastoma we all know the most common clinical manifestation of retinoblastoma is the white pupillary reflex that is the leukocoria but remember the strabismus is also common in 20% of the population so what is important is that if the patient a patient of let's say 3 months old comes to the opd and the patient is having a ret a squint a divergent squint so you have to see the fundus to rule out any retinoblastoma in this child so this was a question asked last to last year where they have asked that the patient has come with the divergent squint what is the best investigative procedure that you would do and the answer there was examination under anesthesia because we have to see the fundus of the patient also and the fundus evaluation was not there in the option okay so very important is see the leukocoria as well as the squint in the patients who are presenting with the retinoblastoma now why a retinoblastoma can cause a leukocoria because if the retinoblastoma at the level of posterior pole has reached 3 mm or more than 3 mm of diameter this basically forms a plaque which sometimes have calcification also which can cause a formation of the retinoblastoma which is seen from the outside as leukocoria now what are the patterns of tumor they can be exophytic endophytic or the diffuse infiltrating i just told you the exophytic is where the tumor goes outside this means the tumor goes towards the subretinal space endophytic is when the tumor goes inside the vitreous cavity and the diffuse infiltrating is when the tumor goes like a placoid thickness and not as a mass layer now another question which is asked commonly in the exam is the most common secondary neoplasm seen in the patients of retinoblastoma then your answer should be osteosarcoma but remember the other causes like pineoblastoma leukemia lymphoma breast and renal cell carcinomas can also be seen in the patients of retinoblastoma so remember friends osteosarcoma is the most common secondary neoplasm occurring in a patient of retinoblastoma and if they ask about the trilateral retinoblastoma so what is trilateral retinoblastoma just remember it is pineoblastoma plus bilateral retinoblastoma this is called trilateral retinoblastoma this was also a previous year question let's move to the next part the next part is how we investigate a patient of retinoblastoma so to investigate a patient of retinoblastoma you have to do a ultrasound b scan if you can see here in the ultrasound b scan you are seeing a mass lesion here okay so there can be a calcification that is also seen in this mass which can be a characteristic of retinoblastoma to see whether this retinoblastoma has extended up to the optic nerve we do a investigation which is called mri head and orbit and we can also give the gadolinium contrast in these patients if we suspect there is a metastasis then we have to do a pet scan but remember avoid ct and biopsy in these cases of retinoblastoma now what are the classification for the neat pg exam you do not have to go into details of the classification these two are the reese elsworth classification and international classification of intraocular retinoblastoma on which basis the treatment of retinoblastoma is done so remember what is the 
grouping of retinoblastoma the international classification of retinoblastoma this means that a patient has come to your opd and you have diagnosed that this patient may be a suspicious retinoblastoma after the indirect ophthalmoscopy you have confirmed the patient that it is a retinoblastoma and then you do it that how much is the retinoblastoma you tell whether the patient is having a group a group b group c group d or group e retinoblastoma so what i mean to see say here is that group a retinoblastoma is the type of retinoblastoma which is smaller and group e is the retinoblastoma which is having more extensive formation so what is group a retinoblastoma when the size of the retinoblastoma is less than 3 mm or it is located more than 1.5 mm or more than 3 mm from the disc okay so wherever is the retinoblastoma it is smaller and away from the important structures of the eye so group b is when the size is more than 3 mm or if it is near your macula or if it is near your the optic nerve head so papillary means optic nerve head and if there is a subretinal fluid which is there but it is not much less than 3 mm from the margin okay what is group c group c means now it has extended more so now it has come to the subretinal seeds less than 3 mm or vitreous seeds less than 3 mm from the main mass or we have both the subretinal and the vitreous seeds which are seen from the mass of retinoblastoma group d retinoblastoma is the retinoblastoma where the seeds have basically gone more outside okay so the seeds are more than 3 mm from the main mass okay and these seeds which are there in more than 3 mm may be or may not be with the subretinal fluid okay so what it means is that in group d there is the extension of retinoblastoma even in the vitreous humor or it is going towards your sclera also okay the group e is the extensive retinoblastoma which is covering more than 50% of globe and it is involving the other parts of eye also like your anterior segment it is causing your neovascular glaucoma it is causing your orbital cells cellulitis thysis or opaque media so these are the groups of the retinoblastoma the even if you are not able to understand or you, you are not able to remember all the various points of retinoblastoma just remember grouping is done when the diagnosis is made and group a is the smallest retinoblastoma and group e is the most severe type of retinoblastoma now after we have classified the retinoblastoma and let's say after we have basically treated the retinoblastoma by enucleation remover of the whole globe then we want to see the histopathology of retinoblastoma and have to tell whether this retinoblastoma is having predisposition to go for metastasis or not so i do a histopathology of the enucleated sample so what i do is in stage 0 what i see is that the patient is treated conservatively and there is no enucleation done what is stage 1 stage 1 is the enucleated sample does not have at its resection margins any evidence of retinoblastoma stage 2 there is a microscopic residual tumor which is there at the extracellular scleral tissue or at the cut end of optic nerve the regional extension means that there is basically overt orbital tissue orbital disease and there is involvement of the preaucular or the cervical lymph nodes the stage 4 means now it has metastasized where if through the hematogenous metastasis it has gone to a single lesion at a single part of the body or there are multiple lesions throughout the body what is 4b 4b is there is a central nervous system extension okay so this means that the from the optic nerve it has come to the brain where it has caused the prechiasmatic lesion any cscns mass or it has gone up to the meninges so the grouping is to basically diagnose the retinoblastoma and tell how much it the is the retinoblastoma the staging is after the enucleation of the retinoblastoma you have to see 
how much is this retinoblastoma has gone up to the various parts of the eye or to the body now what are the histopathological high risk factors these are the anterior chamber seeding that the rb has gone up to the anterior chamber iris infiltration infiltration to the ciliary body choroid invasion of the optic nerve lamina cribrosa or it has gone even from the portion which is retrolaminar to the optic nerve head okay it has invaded the portion where you have cut the optic nerve it has gone up to the sclera or the extra scleral in infiltration has been done of retinoblastoma so these are the high risk factors where you have to do a pet scan to see whether this patient has gone into a stage where the metastasis can be there in the other parts of the body now coming into the management of retinoblastoma the things that you want to know is that if there is an initial retinoblastoma a group a retinoblastoma what you can do is you can do a local therapy by the transpupillary thermotherapy or the cryotherapy if there is a group b retinoblastoma you have to go with the chemotherapy regimen where the important thing that you have to remember is that these patients should be treated with a regimen which is called vec regimen okay vec means v goes with the vincristine e goes with the etoposide c goes with the carboplatin okay or in these patients with the vec regimen you can also give brachytherapy or focal therapy like transpupillary thermotherapy and cryotherapy group c lesions you have to go with the chemotherapy in group d lesions you have to go with the high dose chemotherapy you can use this platin also there and the focal therapy and brachytherapy can be used so basically remember is that in group a what you can do is you can salvage the group without the side effects of the anti cancerous medication group b c and d you have to use a chemotherapy and group e tumor you have to go with the enucleation okay so if the patient is having a bilateral involvement let's say one patient has group a tumor in one eye and group e tumor in the other eye first you have to treat the tumor which is developed in the worst eye okay and there can be very various differential diagnosis of retinoblastoma like phpv coats disease ocular toxoparesis congenital cataract retinopathy of prematurity or any congenital retinal folds or a retinal detachment so these patients also have a differential diagnosis because they can also present like a leukocoria so these are some important points which in very short i have basically told you for the retinoblastoma can be used this video for the revision of retinoblastoma still having any doubts you can just ask me on the unacademy subscribe for the unacademy program with my code that is dr vinit 10 let's crack it